Welcome to the world famous Jiggy Jaguar radio program. Raw and uncut, Jiggy Jag, you know how you do it. You know what I'm saying? Keeping it all the way live. Broadcasting live from Hutchinson, Kansas. Well, I'm sitting here with a linguist. I had a linguist. no idea. <laughs> I love I didn't that. know you were, but I didn't know that you were a wordsmith. <laughs> Call Jiggy right now. 267 22 Jiggy. Daddy Hey, Jiggy, what's happening, man? You must be that uh, David Bowie song. Jiggy play guitar. Jeff, it's a great name, man. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Presenting. I'm, I'm Mike Massey, and uh, you know, you can catch me on Jiggy Jag TV and uh, see a few of my trick shots there. Thank you very much. Jiggy Jaguar. I never knew what freedom was until I saw you lose yours. Well, this is either going to be really good or really bad. I'm not sure which. Welcome to the world famous Cheeky Jaguar Radio Broadcast. We are live coast to coast, border to border on iHeartRadio and AMFM247.com. Tune in, iTunes. Of course, you can find us on the Spotify as well. 24 7 on our website, JiggyJaguar.com. On the Roku Television Network via AMFM 247. And of course, the Jiggy Jaguar radio broadcast is live, as live can get. It's a fizz day, as they say. And we are going to go to an interesting kettle of fish, as they say. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to make of this, but uh, we are going to see. We're ringing the group, and we are going to see if uh, if our crew... Makes it to the uh, makes it to the deal here. We'll see what happens here. We'll see if our we'll see if our uh, our group picks the horn up here. I don't know. We've got to ring the group, as they say on Skype. I'm calling them a little early, but I'm hoping that if I get them on early, we can chat early. But uh. I don't know where IQ is. I don't know where the great Don Mazzella is. I don't know where dangerous Don Mazzella is. That's, that's Dan Perkins. Dan Perkins is dangerous Dan Perkins. So we are going to see uh, if our we have called a whole bunch of people and none of them are available. <laughs> yes! For the very first time ever, I've ringed the group, but the group does not ring back. <laughs> A little bit of Skype issues here today, as they say. Okay, we may just have to reboot Skype. We're just going to reboot Skype. We're just going to do that. We're just going to reboot Skype, because I think Skype needs to be rebooted. I think every once in a while, you got to reboot the Skype. You got to reboot Skype. As they say. I don't know who's saying it. Don't know why they're saying it. They're indeed saying it. Welcome to it. Thanks for tuning in to the big broadcast. We are live from the KJ Radio Studios. And that's just in Kansas. Hutchie Soul Kansas. As they say. Hutchie Soul Kansas. Oh, Hutchie Soul Kansas. As the great Johnny Kim would say. That Johnny Kim. That Johnny Kim. Not to be confused with the Yachty Cam. So we're going to ring the group. Let's ring the group and see what happens here. I don't know. Oh, we had to reboot Skype, and when we rebooted Skype, we got Greg Palast with us. How are you, sir? Did that surprise <laughs> you? You weren't expecting Greg Palast? No, 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 no. I'm glad I've got Greg Palast. This this was the plan all along, as they say. And uh, so, Greg, by the way, all those books behind you, are those research books or your books? <laughs> okay. Greg, can you hear us? Did we just learn? I think I may have lost you for a few seconds. Skype may have hiccuped. There. I don't know. What's going on here? Let's do this. Let's try to figure this out. We're having all sorts of connection issues today, which is also also always fun. But uh, I think we've got Greg. Greg, can you uh, can you hear us, my friend? Maybe not. I might end up having to join the call. I might have to join the call and then uh, unmute myself 
What is we the are There back. we are. Okay. I think we're back. What's going on? Okay. There we are. No. My, my internet connection here got weak. Sorry. Not a problem. Not a problem. It happens. It's technology. <laughs> it happens, my friend. So, uh, so Greg, bring us up to speed on this election, because who knew that when you wrote the book, How Trump Stole 2020, uh, it would kind of be in reverse, maybe. <laughs> what, what do you make no, of no, all this? Uh, I did not steal the election, uh, <laughs> but uh, they, they came close. And don't forget, um, the, the, the papers are, are ignoring the fact that um, we had uh, what's politely called red shift. That is the, um, um, the Biden, if you look at the exit polls and you look at the polling, yes. um, Biden sure has a lot less votes than people said that would be voting. And it's not because people are afraid to say they vote for Trump. 74 million people voted for Trump. It's not like an, it's not like an uh, unusual thing. <laughs> you know? so, so what's happening here is called, the polite term is vote suppression, or as I say, vote theft, because you know when someone steals your car, you don't say, my car has been suppressed. <laughs> and, I love um, that. <laughs> uh, so what's happened uh, is that uh, we uh, ended up with uh, um, massive, amount of of vote thievery um and but let me get down to georgia yes because that's yes. where it's all at right now yes and that's where we have some of the biggest problems you say oh everything's fine because biden won georgia and the secretary of state there's such a stand-up guy standing up to trump let me tell you i know brad raffin's perjure and his name really is perjure because <laughs> um, I, I beat him in federal wow. court with Jim Crow tactics already. I want a federal suit against this character. Um, you know, these guys are from like the heat in the night. Okay, just so you know, they are <laughs> rabid, partisan, right-wing Republicans, but they also have a, an important task, which is to elect two Republican senators. Whoever wins the runoff contest for the U.S. Senate on January 5, yes. whichever party, will control the United States Senate. So the the rabid right-wing um, uh, governor, Brian Kemp, and I have all these, all these uh, films of him with his um, soul stuck up uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> um, and I, I, sorry, I have to keep it for broadcast. Yes, yes. Um, but um, <laughs> Kemp, the idea that Kemp has suddenly turned on Trump, no, they had to throw Trump under the bus because they have to save the Senate seat. You have about 200,000 Georgians who voted for Trump, excuse me, voted for Biden, but then voted for their Senate candidates because it's crossover. And they, they can't tell those Biden voters, don't vote for Republican. Um, don't, you know, we're not going to count your vote. So they have to protect their Senate candidates. And that means Trump is over. He's history anyway. He's going to be the first president on a $3 bill. So, you know, <laughs> it, it, he's over. He's over. Okay, he's, he's history. Okay, he's the whoopee cushion of presidents. You know, it's like we're done. You know, <laughs> don't want to hear from Orange Orifice. Uh, so, um, uh, but so yesterday, uh, the the top civil rights uh, lawyers and uh, groups in the nation, headed by Black Voters Matter and Latasha Brown, yes, uh, filed a lawsuit. Um, joined by uh, Operation Rainbow Push, joined by several of the other civil rights uh, leaders of Georgia, who filed a lawsuit against the Secretary of State, saying that um, to demand that he put back 198,000 voters who were illegally removed from the voter rolls. Wow. That's based on a report I did for the ACLU. Yes. So, so, uh, so a hundred. These guys started with Brian Kemp when he was Secretary of State. This is how he beat Stacey Abrams, and she said so. She cited my work yes. several times, yes. saying, "Look, I won, but I won't be inaugurated because this scamp Kemp removed <laughs> hundreds of thousands of That's voters awesome. of color, stopped them from voting. Well, he did it again. His his handpicked successor, this guy Raffin's perjure." Purged 198,000 voters illegally. So the voting rights groups have demanded that the federal uh, has gone to federal court. We will now have 
a judge has ordered a um, a hearing on uh, Thursday. So a week from today, you're going to have a hearing in federal court about returning these 198,000 voters to the voter rolls. In fact, we're going to have uh, the arguments will be led by Martin Luther King's former lawyer, uh, and um, wow, Fred Ray, who's a civil rights legend, and he'll be arguing. He will be arguing the case a couple days before his 90th birthday. So we have legends of the voting rights movement. Um, Greg Griggs uh, normally represents the NAACP, Oxford Law graduate. He'll be there. I mean, the 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 it's a stellar team. C.K. Hoffler is one of the. You may not know these names, but these are true legends of the voting rights uh, legal. I power. have I have heard many of, of these names, and uh, we have got Greg Pallast with us today. He joins us live. Uh, we also, I think, are joined here by IQ Al Rizzoli as well. And Hi, um, JJ. so hey. so so Greg, uh, tell me an IQ a little bit about how this how how they take these voters off these voter rolls because this is a very interesting process and this is not just a republican problem a democrat problem both parties do this tell us about this process and and how this impacts voting well we have all kind as you know from my book uh how trump stole 2020 Yes. Democrats do some of these games, too. I have a chapter yes. there called um, California Reman. And the Democrats yes. so tend to remove each other because they're in these states like California where it's one state and they just battle each other. But in Georgia, it's, a, it's a, because Georgia this year has become a white minority state. Very hard for the Republicans to hold that state at this point yes. unless they stop the new young voters. Not only uh, – you know, we're used to seeing the, the, the attack on the African-American voters – but yes. Asian American, Hispanic voters, and especially young voters are, are they're going after. So the way that they remove people, they said these people have moved. 198,000 people moved out of Atlanta or moved out of Georgia. Listen, if yeah. you don't live in Atlanta, you can't vote in Atlanta. If you do, you go to prison. It's pretty easy to catch people who are voting illegally, by the way. It's, it's not rocket science. I used to work for the Justice Department. <laughs> I catch you in four seconds. And you go to jail for five years. And I've never heard anyone get caught illegally voting and not going to prison you go to jail so don't yes. do it yes. now but they say look we have evidence that a hundred that these hundreds of thousands of people moved actually they removed over three hundred thousand but a hundred thousand more than a hundred thousand people did move did die and a few were convicted of felony crimes so they they're in the can they can't vote if you've got a felony conviction while you're serving so but so what's going on here so why shouldn't they remove these voters the answer is I was at those polling stations uh, in 18 and saw one African-American Hispanic voter after another say they threw me out, including, by the way, I was there um, when Martin Luther King's 92-year-old cousin was thrown out of the polling station. Uh, they said that she no longer lived in Atlanta. And so I went to her home that they said she no longer lived in. There was Martin Luther King's picture on the wall, <laughs> uh, having dinner with her in that home. So she had to be there at least 60 years. <laughs> and, um, and so they said she didn't vote. So they took away her vote. Her granddaughter was there and was just hysterical in tears about this. In fact, um, if you go to um, Leo DiCaprio's uh, Instagram page, I usually don't uh, suggest going to Leo DiCaprio's <laughs> Instagram page. It's not where I'm usually at, though it's very, very... It's always a trusted news source. Oh, but he posted <laughs> our Instagram of... Uh, he released two public service announcements, one by Rosario Dawson, another by uh, Zoe Saldana, Gal uh, you know, uh, Guardians oh, yeah. of the Galaxy. Yeah. And uh, that hers is in Spanish, by the way. To, re to warn people that they could be purged in, in Georgia and should look up their voter registrations now. So they, there's all these people, Rahim Shabazz. Uh, now he, now he did move, but he moved down the street. You, they can't remove you from the voter rolls because you moved in your <laughs> you neighborhood. Just, That's federal law. You just put, uh, you, you, you just put your stuff in a car and 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 drove down the street. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, if you move, and we had one woman who lost her vote because she moved within, she was moved, she was in a nursing home, they, she moved within her building. Yeah. And uh, they took away her vote. 
But most people didn't move at all. They just have common names. They say, oh, gee, Jose Garcia is registered in New Mexico, so you must have moved to New Mexico, Jose. Well, believe it or not, there's a couple people named Jose Garcia. Um, <laughs> in fact, I can tell you exactly that there are 538 guys named James Brown whose votes were threatened. Yes. Uh, yes. I can't make that up, by the way. So we actually – here's the deal. Who says here's the deal? Am I <laughs> I'm getting infected here? That's not a partisan state. When I say here's the deal, that's not a partisan state. Uh, but here is the deal. Uh, the um, um, because I don't have those cool sunglasses. Uh, but, that's right. <laughs> so here's the deal. You it they we you cannot remove people from the voter rolls for moving unless you first check, and this is federal law. Unless yes. you first check with the post office, which by the way tends to know where you live. Yeah, and so. Uh, they didn't. We did. That is, the Palace Investigative Fund, my team hired experts from Silicon Valley. You can hire the post office through an official licensee. They have a deal where you can check if people actually live somewhere on their official list. They didn't do it. And so they got the wrong list from some small operator in Nebraska. I'm not knocking Nebraska, but some guy in Nebraska who had some type of cheap list. And they used that, and they liked it because it had... Um, tens of thousands of people who they said had put in change of address forms. You know, when you go to the post office, you change address, you put in that little change of address form. Oh, yeah. And the post office said, these people have never put in change of address forms. We've checked our records for four years. They have not put in change of address forms. This is all fabricated, according to the United States Postal Service. Then we went to the real experts. I'm talking about the official experts on address. Forget the post office. We went to Google, Amazon, and eBay. Yes. And they, they know where you are right now sorry no privacy there <laughs> the people that they use as their address experts went through the list too name by name by name and we found out that um in fact there is um um that these people have never moved from the address that they claim they moved from so we're saying these people haven't moved their only crime is attempting to vote while black or young and you know it put them back on so Thursday, uh, a federal court thought it was substantial enough that they have to um, that they're going to face the they're going to face the judge. This is this this is amazing. We have investigative reporter Greg Palace with us today. He joins us live here in a broadcast. IQ Rizzoli as well, and we've got uh, Don Mazzella. And uh, problem here, Greg. Can can you still hear us, my friend? I can definitely hear you there. It okay. Just, uh, sounded like the ocean had crashed. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, well, Don, yes, Don, Don, Don is, Don is calling us from Florida. So <laughs> there oh, is that. <laughs> so, um, so Greg, ex explain to. Um, I, I know at one point we had a uh, conversation with you on one of my other shows about. Uh, I, I think it was the James Brown deal right. about. Right. The guy who had been it, it, it had to do with Chris Kobach and a bunch of other yes. things. Explain to to the guys and me retell this story because this is amazing how, how this works with the Democrats, the Republicans, everybody doing all this stuff where we're removing people from voter rolls. Explain this to us. Well, in fact, uh, unfortunately, because the the camera isn't uh, working out for some reason. Uh, otherwise, I would show you this sheet that I got from inside the Secretary of State's office in from Georgia. Yes. A document that he got from Chris Kobach, a giant from Kansas, a giant list of names to remove from the voter rolls because these people <laughs> were, were registered in two states. So I'll just read you a couple names. Yes. Um, okay, so there is um, Michael Brown of Atlanta, is supposed to be uh, Michael Brown, the same guy as Michael Brown of Kansas. Now, you might say Michael <laughs> Brown's a common name. Hey, not for Republican. But it, it, believe it or not, and I'm looking at the at this is Chris Kobach's list. Yes. To the state of Georgia. Michael Stephen Brown of Atlanta was supposed to be the same voter as Michael T, like in Thomas Brown of Kansas. <laughs> so they're supposed to be the same voter. I can't make this stuff up. John Wilson of Atlanta is supposed to be the same as John Wilson of Alaska. Well, it's John Cowles Wilson of Atlanta. John M., uh, as in Maynard Wilson of Alaska. 
And these are the this is the list, the poisonous purge list sent by Chris Kobach to Brian Kemp when he was Secretary of State of Georgia. <laughs> this, and this is, is amazing. So we're just telling a federal judge, look, this list is phony as a three dollar bill with Trump's face on it. Yes. And um, <laughs> And so you got to put these voters back. So, uh, um, Don Don Mazzella has joined us. Don, what, what what do you make of the fact that that it just seems like whether it's whether it's Republicans, Democrats, everybody seems to be doing these weird things with voting. Like Greg was saying there that they're they're trying to remove the same guy with the same name from another state. It's the weirdest deal. Wow. Well, welcome to American politics. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I, I hate to say it, but in, 1960, in 1964, when I uh, covered my first uh, presidential election, I remember uh, when we were building up to it, uh, John Chancellor said to, said to a group of us about how uh, Chicago voted in uh, 1960. And he, he told the tale. So you, you, the nice. Uh, there we go? are. There's Greg. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there you go. Sorry about that. Not a problem. Not a problem. Or my hat. Go ahead and get me my hat. <laughs> <laughs> I like your hat. <laughs> oh, Greg. Greg's hat is fantastic. That that that's his signature. That is. <laughs> At least it keeps your head warm. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, um, they had an election in, uh, in Patterson, New Jersey, in which for the first time you could mail in your ballots. And uh, of the 7,000 ballots in the state of Patterson uh, that were mailed in, 4,200 were determined to be bogus. So, I mean, it's there, but I don't think it would change the election. Um, so. I think I think personally, President Trump should just say, you know, uh, I did a good job. You didn't appreciate it. I'm going home. That's what <laughs> George Washington did. And if you think about it, um, I, you know, it's always difficult to give up the power of the presidency. But you know, maybe it's good that maybe he should just do it. What? 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 What, what do you think about that, Greg? Do, do you think he should just? concede and say, hey, I'm going to go play golf. You guys have fun with it. Have fun with Biden and his non-progressive policies. I don't think, I don't think he should concede. I think he should confess. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, so Greg, you, you were talking earlier, and, and we I, I heard you, uh, I think it was on Jimmy Dore's uh, program, talk about what they do in California with uh, voting. And just some of the weird things that the Democrats do, basically to eat their own. Um, tell me and the guys here a little bit about this, because there was something to do with like a uh, an envelope and a bunch of other things. That th th this was fascinating when I heard this. Well, one of the things is, I mean, they use a lot of tricks. I mean, Alex Padilla is our Secretary of State, a Democrat, and um, you know, I'm not going to protect Democrats if they play games. And one of the things that he did was really cute. Because remember, it's a one-party state. So there are effectively virtually no Republicans in this uh, state or in state offices. So it's all Democrats fighting for the spoils uh, and fighting in primaries. So in the pri presidential primary, we have a very strange system in California where um, if you are independent, that is what they call here no party preference, you can still vote in the Democratic primary. What people don't know, and so almost all young people, almost every student who registers to vote, registers without a party, uh, you know, for whatever they are. Oh, they're too, yeah. they're, 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 they're too good for a party. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so uh, the problem is what they don't understand is that what Alex Padilla did was wonderful. He sent every one of these independent voters, because we have an all mail-in system in California, by the way, um, the uh, mail ballot system. So your ballots mailed to you. Well, they mailed three million ballots to independent voters without the Democratic presidential candidates. So they couldn't vote in the primary. They, you can, but you had to go through a whole process. And you had to know this. You had to sign on the back of that ballot, 
mail it back saying you want a special something called a crossover Democratic Party ballot. Or you can take your your ballot without the, the candidates on You see, you got this ballot without the candidates for president on it. <laughs> so um, they, you go in and, and you can turn in your presidentless ballot and get one with the presidents on them, uh, candidates on them. But you have to ask for what's called a Democratic crossover ballot. And in some counties, if you don't know the magic word crossover, the clerks are not allowed to tell you, oh, you want a crossover ballot. No, you have to guess the right term. You don't get you don't know it. You don't get it. It's crazy. And Amazing. Have no idea. So what's happened is, is that according to the California poll, which is the experts on California statistics, about five hundred fifty three thousand votes were lost to Bernie Sanders in the primary. That's half a million votes lost to Sanders in the primary. Now, he did win uh, this 2020 primary in California. Yeah. But he lost in 16 by about 200,000 votes when uh, easily that half million votes that he lost through this kind of rigmarole um, would have put him over the top. Now, does that mean he would have gotten the nomination? Probably not. But, I mean, I do, I do prefer that the voters choose our senators and presidents and congress people and, and people. not vote trickery yes what do you say <laughs> we have got a tremendous guest with us today greg ballast is with us he is known for his investigative reports for the bbc the guardian rolling stone black voters matter and aclu have released palace investigation finding that georgia illegally removed 198,000 voters from voter rolls before this election, and Powell says that this could affect the outcome of the big runoff for the two Georgia Senate seats on January 5. You can also get more information on Greg's website, gregpalace.com. One of the things I love about Greg is that he is your old-school investigative reporter. He gives it to the Republicans. He gives it to the Democrats. And uh, he is perfect for this program today with IQL Rizzoli and Don Mazzella. Don, jump in there, and I know you've got some questions yeah. for Greg. Well, I really do. Well, I guess my, my first one, you know, the, the Democrats are the one that, uh, that were crying wolf about uh, illegal um, voter uh, uh, restrictions, etc. Yet it seemed to me that most of the damage was done by, by them to Republicans. What do you say to that? Uh, that's BS. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I've been voting. Like I say, I, I'm not going to protect the Democrats. I've gone after them big time, and they hate me. In fact, um, one great quote I have on my book um, it, um, from the Clinton administration, we hate that SOB, referring to me. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I have no love with the Democratic Party or they, and vice versa. But here this time, we've had a massive attack on the right to vote of people of color. And, uh, for example, Wisconsin, that, that state was almost stolen. The Republican legislature passed a law saying you have to remove 129,000 voters from the voter rolls. Because, again, because of this new gimmick, they supposedly moved. Well, we got the list. Uh, we There was a, a team of professors from Harvard, Yale, and uh, Penn who did a study and said this race, this list is not only inaccurate, but it's violently racist. Uh, we looked through, and we found that most of the people on that list had never moved anywhere. Their only crime was voting while black. We put their names on it. For example, they, took, they said that um, Sequana Taylor, uh, a black woman, uh, no longer lived in Milwaukee, so she should be removed from the voter rolls. Yes. And I, I confronted Sequana, and she said, well, I have not moved from Milwaukee. I said, prove it. She says, look at the name on that building behind me. She's a Milwaukee County supervisor. She did not move from <laughs> Milwaukee. But this is the kind of games that they are playing. So it's mostly Republicans that have been involved in massive vote. We t use the term vote suppression. But it means you can't vote because they decide to remove you from the voter rolls or they give you all kinds of problems. For example, uh, this latest one. Are you ready for this one? The, the Republican secretary of state of Georgia uh, tried to slip through regulation last Sunday. We caught him saying that if you don't have a car registered in Georgia, your vote, you can't register to vote in Georgia without being challenged. In other words, you could so no car, no vote. Now, no car, no vote. 
because well, here's the grounds. I understand what they're saying. Understand there is a reason for this, and I'm not going to say that there's no reason. They're saying if you don't have a car registered in Georgia, well, maybe you don't live here and you're not a resident. Okay, we don't want non-residents voting. I only know of one. A re- uh, this guy, Bill Price, a Republican broadcaster from Florida, who illegally registered in Georgia for this runoff. So I have one case. Wow. Of and by the way, he was uh, like dumbest criminal on the planet. He got on the radio and announced what he did. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> so, uh, well, he's going to need a very good lawyer for that. But, uh, he said, I just <laughs> He said, I used my brother's address in Georgia. But but that's one crazy schmo, right? <laughs> um, and who happened to be a Republican. Uh, but the thing is, uh, but there, if you require showing that you have a car registered in Georgia, you don't need to be a genius to figure out that that knocks yeah. out people like uh, this young woman I know in Savannah, who's a voter there who was challenged, my daughter. And, wow. Uh, in Savannah. And the... So you knock out young people, you knock out poor people who don't have cars, obviously, and a lot of senior citizens, by the way, as the NAACP pointed out. Oh, yeah. And this has been done by the GOP because they figure young people, voters of color, urban people, poor people, no matter where they are, tend to vote Democratic. So it's a it's nasty. It's challenging the right of Americans to vote when they don't have evidence of some widespread voter fraud. All they have is one goofball broadcaster from florida <laughs> i still think that's, that's hilarious the excuse to um and that's the excuse to uh, knock out what could be thousands of voters <laughs> but i think the exposure we put on that is backing them off so uh iq al rizzoli uh you're over in the united kingdom uh you're listening to all of this you're always the outsider what what do you make of all this my friend besides the jokes that we are having <laughs> this is a very serious matter yes i mean looking at america from the outside i come from the middle east uh-huh. and in the middle east you don't have voter registration because if the dictator decides to vote for him 99.9 will vote for him otherwise they're dead uh-huh. but looks in america my god it's, it's worse than a joke you have so-called democracy you have so-called machines and electronic gadgets to monitor Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan from 120 miles in space. And yet, you have voter deception on a massive scale. This is not democracy. This is criminal. It's nothing a laughing matter. We can laugh at it. Okay, it's a joke. But really, on it depends the future of the United States of America and the future of the world. Yeah. Now, I look at it from my point of view. Donald Trump is the savior of Western civilization. It might sound over the bo- over, you know, overacting. No. Without him, with Joe Biden, we are going to have nuclear war in the Middle East. I don't give a damn about all your uh, so-called professors, <laughs> so-called uh, statisticians. We are facing a catastrophe. Joe Biden wants to talk to the Iranians and put them back to the nuclear option. Iranians want to destroy the Saudis and Israel. Israel is not going to allow it. How how are they going to do it? War. Not complete war. Strategic annihilation of the nuclear facilities in Iran. And you know what? They might have to use tactical nuclear weapons what do you think greg yeah what what do you think about this greg because yeah. I, I i've got a follow-up there to what iq was what was saying but i want i want you to tackle his comments and then i want to talk about how biden's screwing over the progressives even though they're supposedly going to shove him to the to the progressive side but go ahead greg well a couple <laughs> things one i gotta admit i i don't want to pretend to be an expert on uh, nuclear dangers in the mid east that's really i agree that's no joking matter and that's way over my head and even over my hat so i'm not going to pretend to take on the issue that i don't know a darn thing about uh but i uh, can tell you as you mentioned, you're there in England. Of course, for those who know Greg Pals, know me. Uh, I was a reporter for BBC Television for Newsnight. Yep. I 
I'm sure you watch that program. And for I was a columnist and investigative reporter for The Guardian. And people in England, as you would say, are shocked. They say, how could the great America come up with these elections where you see, you know, black people in an hour long, you know, five hour long lines? How does that happen? People are pretty in Europe are pretty horrified when they see American democracy, because, as you say, when we pick a president, we pick the world's leader, not just America's leader. Yes. And so it should be. Look, it, we I you know, look, we don't always make the, the right choices in America, but I think we're <laughs> best off when the voters make the choice. And we don't have, my wife is uh, Swiss and also a British citizen, but she's born in Switzerland. And my Swiss in-laws are, you know, watching from the Alps saying, what's going on in America? And they don't have voter registration, by the way, in Switzerland, even though they have a bigger foreign population than America by proportion. They don't assume people are lying when they go in to vote. And so they don't block people from voting. In fact, in Switzerland, you can be fined for not voting. And wow. so the rest wow. of the world is, is horrified, uh, as Don is pointing out, at America's inability to live up to its democratic ideals because it harms everyone. And I don't think either. We've gotten in America to this point where we think it's just OK for any party. If you can figure out a way to shaft the other to stop other voters from voting, to stop your opponents, voters from voting throwing out their votes, challenging their registrations. And that's just okay. And it's not okay. It's not. It's time that America make a decision that we're going to have to live up to our democratic ideal, that everyone yeah. gets to vote. I'm only, look, if the, if, if the Republicans win back the Senate and this January 5 runoff, and it's a choice of the voters, I'll live with democracy. I don't care who's chosen. I want the voters to choose. And I know that sounds a little highfalutin, but that's my view. <laughs> no, it's not highfalutin. That's exactly what I was saying. If you don't allow the voters to choose and you deceive them and you literally undermine the system, well, so what, what are we electing? I mean, Joe yeah. Biden, by any stretch of imagination, I'm looking from the outside. Remember, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. There is no chance in hell that Joe Biden could be president. 17 million people in America in the last few years registered for arms. 17 million new people registered to carry weapons. And these people are going to vote for Biden, who wants to take the Second Amendment from them. Where is the logic? I mean, Greg, you correct me. If you are buying a gun to protect yourself, would you vote for Biden? Tell me, please, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, here, here's, here's the good question for you. We also had massive registration drives and massive new number of voters that never voted before from both parties. Well, that too. Because there was such yeah. high stakes. And so there is no question. There's no question that... Donald Trump got 74 million votes and Biden got something about 78 million votes. The question is how many people were not allowed to vote. And, and see, that's the agency. big issue. Yeah. yeah. We had an agency. I don't doubt the votes that are cast. Uh, what I do worry about is the couple million votes that were not counted. Yeah. People were either blocked at the polls or they their votes were... Um, were disqualified, especially the mail-in ballots, which are disqualified on all kinds of cockamamie reasons. Um, and so I actually believe if you counted those discounted votes, because we're talking, say, even in Georgia, about 200,000 ballots discounted because they supposedly came in late because we had problems with the post office, et cetera, oh, um, yeah. that you would have had an even bigger margin for Biden. You know, that's my technical analysis. You can disagree. And whether Biden is going to... This, you know, lead us into war in the Middle East or not? I, like I say, I'm not an expert. In that. <laughs> what I can tell you is that is that the voters did vote for him. He won the the popular vote by a huge margin, and um, he doubtless won those electoral votes. I, there is no scenario of uncounted votes that I can find that puts Donald Trump back in the White House, and that's just the numbers. Yeah, I accept the numbers, but question. The Constitution says, I am not an expert like you. The Constitution says, 12 midnight, you don't vote after that. 
even in England, after 10 o'clock in the evening, no vote is counted. But after 12 o'clock, at 12 o'clock, we counted, there were 10 people. I was one of them in England, and the others were American. Yeah. We counted 299 electoral votes at midnight of the 3rd of the, uh, no, uh, November. Yeah. So what happened 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, five hours later? They were counting for 10 days after the well, midnight. Well, of course. Because that's not constitutional. Oh, yeah, it it's is. Not, uh, it, it isn't it, constitutional. Check there's it. Not, by the way, there's nothing in the Constitution about voting. Uh, which shocks many Americans, except that you have to, <laughs> you can't discriminate. But there's no right to vote in the U.S. Constitution at all, uh, which is <laughs> so a bit of a of a something that the founders left out. Yeah. But the so there's no constitutional issue. What there is is that we had about probably about I have to look at the final numbers, but we're looking uh, a good 70 million people mailed in their ballots in such and many states, including, for example, Georgia, Florida, and Georgia, Pennsylvania, and most other states, Wisconsin. You're not allowed to count ballots until, until, the polls close. And the yes. reason you have people, some people voting after midnight, uh, you look at those lines in places like Georgia, and they're voting till 2 a.m. because the lines are so long because they didn't arrange for enough polling stations. I said, say that. And, and, yeah. And you know, so it's like we have an insane system. So, if you, yeah, it's true that if you were in England and you found people voting after midnight, you'd say, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and, but not in America. And the other is, you know, in America, we literally can't open the ballots. You're talking about having to count. I was stunned, just so you know. I was shocked that we were able to count the ballots within a week. I actually thought there's no way we'll get this done in a week. And I can tell you in California, we're still not done counting. No one cares about California, but we're still not done counting. <laughs> we're still not done counting. And um, because also in America, California. we have these insane long ballots, like like the California ballots, like um, like 15 pages long. Oh, yeah. Vote on yeah, everything. because you have to vote on everything. You, 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 you literally have to become. So, yeah, so I understand, like, if you're looking from abroad and say, they're still counting ballots like days later. The answer is because we have an insane system. Okay? We have an insane <laughs> system. We have an insane system. And, um, and it, therefore, it's, it is given to manipulation. And the, and the numbers do get funny because um, one of the things that happened this year that usually doesn't, usually the number of mail-in ballots is about equally split between parties. In fact, Republicans have tended to vote a little bit more by mail than Democrats. This year was almost entirely a Democratic mail-in vote because that's what Biden was pushing, Yeah, is to mail in, mail in, mail in your ballot. So we ended up crushing the vote counting systems, and that's why it took a long time. So I understand it, but we're not, if there's any problem, it's that a lot of these mail-in ballots were thrown out because they were late, postage due. We had 100,000 ballots in yeah. four years ago thrown out for postage due. So if, if then you have to have an inner ballot. If you mail in your ballot, you got to have an inner ballot. If you don't put in the inner ballot, the inner envelope, excuse me, it's called a naked ballot, and you can't vote naked. <laughs> well, I don't make this up. It's true. Look at it. It's up. the craziest uh, deal, Greg. We have crazy rules. I agree. Well, you should, what we need, I, I just want, you know, what I would like is, you know, um, if, what, it, once, if you meet my wife, you'll understand what I'm saying. We should just have the Swiss run our election system and be done with it. They, <laughs> they know how to make it. They would do a better outcomes. job. Well, well, Greg, I know that we're up against the clock, and you've got yes, plenty of other things going. you've got to go. Before you go, how do we connect with you online, social media, everything you've got going, my friend? Number one, go to gregpalast.com, gregpalast.com, and uh, you'll get my latest report to find out about the lawsuits, or Greg underscore Palast is uh, my Twitter handle. And uh, you can find me on Facebook, too. And by the way, and one thing you'll enjoy sounding better than me is listen to Rosario Dawson and Zoe Saldana, <laughs> who have done these uh, PSAs for us, which you can find at our website, but also at, Leon at Leo DiCaprio uh, Instagram. Thank you. Well, Greg, it's been an honor and a privilege. Thanks for chatting with me and the guys today. And we look forward to doing it again. Thank you, my friend. You got me. Bye. Appreciate it. There he goes, Greg Palast. And uh, so, Don, well, 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 I get ready.